scholar of our scientific history, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great reverence and gratitude that uh, we gather here today to commemorate the indomitable spirit and unwavering dedication of the people of Asante who played a pivotal role during the British and Asante War of 1874, popularly referred to as the Sagranti War. As we delve into the annals of history, we also uncover stories of courage, of compassion, and sacrifice that resonate with the Asante nation. My role in this symposium is to discuss the missionary factor in the Sagranti War. Many scholars, such as Edubuahin, Tom Makaski, Emmanuel Champon, Samuel Kobe, Archbishop Sapon, Ratri, Abba Wicks, and many more have handled this very subject with some level of excellence. I stand on their works to discuss the interests of the Basel missionaries in the war. In the words of Njoku, the colonial enterprise and the Christian missionary enterprise together constitute two of the most important historical events that have, for good or bad, considerably shaped the history of Africa, including Ghana. Both defining events occurred almost simultaneously. The colonial enterprise focused on the economic and political dimensions of life in Africa, redrawing the boundaries, reshaping its political arrangements and structure, and considerably looking at different orientations and vital institutions. The missionary enterprise impacted heavily on the religious and cultural landscape of Africa and considerably tinkered with its dominant worldview and value system. A critical revisiting of these two major events, either separately or as twin events, is crucial and indeed unavoidable for our understanding of the British Ashanti War of 1874, popularly referred to as the Second War. Ashanti and Britain fought several wars. Those battles were called several names, such as the Battle of Nsamankor in 1824, Akatamansu in 1826, Sagranti in 1874, and the Yar Asantua War of 1900 and 1901. Prior to the Sagranti War, Asante had established itself as a powerful political entity with a strong religious and cultural infrastructure. In spite of its greatness, it still fought more wars. The frequency with which Ashanti battled with her neighbors, including Dentra, Fanti, Bono, Eve, Gan, Gonja, Dagomba, and many more, will have drawn attention to itself by several observers, especially the British and some missionaries. British administrators seem to have arrived at the conclusion that Asante indeed was a threat to their colonial project. Historians have indicated that some of the wars that were fought between Britain and Asante were in relation to the breach of peace and agreement, and that of 1874 was not an exception. It was born out of the desire to ensure that Asante obeys the peace agreement that it has signed in 1863 not to fight the southern states and also to end enslavement of people. Achempon, Abba Wilkes, Tudor, Lewin, and several others have indicated that the Asante British War of 1874 had a kind of crushing military defeat on Asante. Asante got demoralized and of course, the foundation of its very stay was shaken. Indeed, the awesome military technology of the British led that was de deployed was referred to more or less as a total war. Total war because it characterized the sound that was actually coming from the weapons and rifles that were handled by the British. But the question is that if the Sagranti War was a matter between Britain and British forces and Asante. 
what triggered the interest of Basel missionaries in the war? A people that were supposed to spread the gospel. To answer this question, we recast our minds to events in early 1868 and again in 1869 when the Kingdom of Anglo and Akramu around the lower Volta declared war on the Eve of Crepe. In the ensuing war, Asante soldiers sacked Crepe towns, including Sokode, Enum, Ho, and took along with them missionaries, including Ramzia and his people, Johannes, Kuhn, Smith, Richard, and Pam, Ramses made. We might begin to wonder why an internal war could lead to the capture of missionaries. One needs to understand actions and events of this nature from the complex relationship that have developed between society, church, and the state. The Christian church in the Gold Coast at that time was lumped with other European agencies such as governments and trading firms. The church could hardly be considered by the people in the Gold Coast as an agency with a separate existence. Such was the obvious conclusion to be drawn from missionaries accompanying soldiers on their campaigns and soldiers accompanying missionaries on their mission journeys. They are perfect examples, for example, of Rhys, who was accompanied by a soldier up to a propong from the Danish fort. There's also evidence of free men going to Kumasi accompanied by military officers. As already noted, the first five weeks of captivity of Ramsia and his group saw the captives marching at the daily pace of about 30 miles as the journey from Crepe towards Kumasi. This was difficult for European captives who had to walk in the scorching heat from the blazing sun and burning houses. In the process, Ramsey's baby had a fever and Kuhn a deep wound on his heel from heavy chains. Ramsey's son or child died before the captives got to Kumasi in 1870. Their hope of gaining freedom once they got into Kumasi, as they expected, was yet to be realized. The detention dragged on for more than four years. In captivity, Ramsey's wife gave birth to a second child. Attempts were made to release the hostages. David Asante of the Basel Mission, in his letter to the captives, highlighted aspects of ransoming operations that had taken place. And I quote, twice have we sent messengers to the Asante camp offering money for your release, but in vain. I have been sent to Begro on the frontier of Achim to try and come into communication with you as up to the present. We have only heard of reports from you. I give the bearer a pencil, paper, and scissors that you may write or send some of your hair as an assurance that you are still alive in Kumasi. With lack of success on the part of the Basel Christian Mission, the British Colonial Administration for Gold Coast, who now had responsibility for Crepe, took charge to secure the release of the captives. One of the first decisions taken was Britain to secure, to take possession of her sentry captives on the Gold Coast, including Bofo. I have some water. Buffalo's nephew, whom British officers retrieved from Krogo in 1869. The plot, it seemed, was to swap captives for the Europeans in Kumasi. Hence, in June 1870, the British governor of Cape Coast, John Popo Hansen, released and sent to Kumasi a batch of Asante prisoners seized in a previous Asante war around Achim with a promise to free more of Asante captives upon the release of missionaries. That was also not successful. At another time, he sent Asante Hine a gold embroidered silk worth about 100 pounds. That also did not help matters. Instead, the demand was for 100 ounces of gold or about 1,440 pounds 
for each captive that was being held in Kumasi. To fast forward to 1872, Karkare sent the captives to Fomina, south of Asante on the River Pra. And a message to the British administrator was that 1,000 should be paid to Asante agents in Cape Coast per captive so as to seal off the deal. A week later, the captives reached Fomina, but before leaving Kumasi, the missionaries had redeemed their two African helpers, that is Palma and his wife Coco, by paying six programs drawn on the Basel mission account. As the European captives journeyed to the coast, a British force read, headed in the opposite direction of the Asante army. The two armies clashed in 1874. The British forces seized the captives and led them as freedmen to Kumasi, uh, to Kekos. It is important to highlight at this stage that the missionary factor played a very significant role in the 1874 war. The capture of the missionaries and the ensuing negotiations allowed the British to plan both in terms of personnel and logistics to be able to launch an attack. Also, the frequent correspondences and spy work and the movement of missionaries such as David Asante enabled enough intelligence reports to be gathered on Asante and his forces. Apart from this direct contribution to the war, there were equally important insights that are worthy of note as far as the involvement of missionaries is concerned. The support of missionaries for the war was simply to pro provide them with a clear form and a direct or indirect way for stability and order in the missionary enterprise in Asante. In Asante. Since the frequent wars between Asante and the people of the coast proved to be unduly disruptive and even explosive from missionary work. It became evident that after the war, some missionaries, such as Ramsia, had some guaranteed uh, territory for them to be able to carry out their conversion works. The interest of missionaries in the war was also due to the intimate relationship between the formal end of the transatlantic slave trade and the beginning of the Christian missionary enterprise in the Gold Coast. Even though slavery had been abolished by the British in several of their evangelisms, they had come across evidence of existence of slavery in most parts of the Gold Coast, including Asante. Missionaries embarked on campaigns to end slavery by arguing that slaves demand mercy and compassion. In their mission to Asante, Saganan Wolseley and his band of fighters projected the war in such grand eloquence so as to gain some sympathy and support from missionaries within the Gold Coast and also outside of the country. These were actually people that were already exposed to a number of abolitionist proposals. Rather than trade in human beings, Humanity will profit more in trading in commodities, they added. For the missionaries giving support to the war, it was more or less an obligation for them to be able to pass on Christian faith to Asante. For the missionaries, the defeat of Asante was construed and seen as a kind of remedy for the slave trade and a civilizing mission. This mindset would be put into action immediately after the war where Basel missionaries converted ex-slaves, some of whom volunteered to be agents of the pro propagation of the Christian message and values in the dominions of Asante. The interests of missionaries could further be viewed from the perspective of so-called religious and cultural hegemony. Missionaries had the belief that people of Asante and the Gold Coast deserve a different doctoral heritage especially when Asante religion and culture was seen as an exerting overriding influence and authority over the affairs of many of the missionary operations. Asante has several deities and had no problem with bringing in more. For example, Krachidente, Nana Bukum, and several others were part of Asante uh, kingdom. Beyond their own enduring internal conversions, and difficulties, the fear and even 
spread of Asante religious and cultural practice, religious intolerance was, in this case, a very important factor in the interest of the missionaries as far as the uh, Sagranti War is concerned. The ritual practice and the modes of worship found in the traditional religions was also assumed to be one of the critical factors that made the, missions, the missionaries to support the Sagranti War. I'm told I'm now, in summary, several factors accounted for the missionary interest in the Sagranti War, apart from the capture of Ramzia. The need for space to evangelize, the fear of conversion of Asante kings and other notables into Islam, and its attendant consequences of missionary work. The need to maintain some Christian and cultural hegemony in a kingdom that was highly revered and respected among others made the Bashan missionaries to support British forces against Asante in the Sangranti War. Thank you so much for your attention. Sabi ka ya chani mu nyame nai, ebu afaso enye di ya chani mu chenyame. Sebedi.